Hi, I'm Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum. Are you one of the 70 million Americans who can't get a good night's sleep? Ever wonder why you're exhausted and still unable to pass out and waking up repeatedly during the night? Well, in this segment, we're going to talk about the causes of insomnia, and we're going to talk about sleep disorders like restless leg syndrome and sleep apnea. And then we're going to talk about natural and prescription therapies that can help you get a solid night's sleep. Now, it's important to start by looking at the causes of insomnia. In many people, it's simply a matter of too much stress. When your body is making a lot of stress, you make a lot of the hormone called cortisol, that's the adrenal stress hormone, and now when that's too high at nighttime, it keeps you awake. Your body thinks it's daytime. So one approach, if you find that your mind's racing at nighttime and you're just kind of wide awake and alert, even though you're exhausted, is to use uh, a mix of herbs that tends to lower the cortisol levels at bedtime. I like a product called Sleep Tonight, which is a mix of ashwagandha, phosphatidylserine, and other natural products that have been shown to lower cortisol levels in the evening. In addition, you want to look at sleep hygiene. If you find that you're drinking too much coffee, uh, especially later on in the day, uh, if you're exercising near bedtime, uh, things along those lines, it's going to keep you up at night. So you want to go ahead, and my book, From Fatigue's Fantastic, uh, or on my website, you can find an article at vitality101.com. We'll talk about how to get solid sleep. Now, let's take a look at some of the natural remedies that can help most anybody with insomnia get a good night's sleep. I like a mix of six herbs, and my favorite would be valerian, which is found in most sleep remedies. Now, about 5 to 10% of people will find that valerian actually wakes them up at night. So if you're one of that 5 to 10%, you want to leave off the valerian. Passion flower, wild lettuce, Jamaican dogwood. Uh, and the herbalists tell us the way that Jamaican dogwood uh, was discovered was that Jamaican fishermen would actually go and strip the dogwood off the trees and put it in baskets. And then they drill out and they throw the dogwood on the water. And they'd wait and do whatever it is Jamaican fishermen do while they're waiting. And then they would go ahead and the fish would fall asleep and float to the surface. And they'd throw them in the boat and just go paddle out back. And that's the herbal lore behind Jamaican dogwood. And I actually talked to an herbalist a couple months ago who worked there and thought, said that that is exactly what happened. Uh, wild lettuce is also very good for sleep. And theanine, which comes from green tea. But if you drink enough green tea to get the theanine, you're going to be up peeing all night. So I like a mix of those six herbs. Uh, I like a product called the Revitalizing Sleep Formula, made by Enzymatic Therapy. Uh, and that can be taken with a Sleep Tonight product, which also helps to lower cortisol. So one or both of those two natural remedies will be outstanding for sleep. In addition, you'll find that by taking uh, a high-protein meal at bedtime, if you wake up in the middle of the night, some of you will do that because you have a low blood sugar, especially if you wake up with a start. And eating things like some turkey, which will keep your blood sugar stable through the night and actually give you tryptophan to help you sleep uh, can be very helpful. Also taking calcium or magnesium at bedtime, I'd recommend actually they both be taken together. Um, make sure you have a, a powder, not a tablet because they don't dissolve, but a powdered form of the mix. Very, very helpful for sleep. And melatonin, just three tenths of a milligram. The higher doses are no more effective and I think they carry an unnecessary risk. So three tenths to half a milligram, plenty for the melatonin. Now, you'll find that most of you using these natural remedies, and another good option would be if you like aromatherapy, especially for you ladies, get a lavender pillow, little pillows that have lavender in it. Research has shown that the smell of lavender, and don't make it a lavender spray that's all chemical, but get natural lavender, actually helps you to sleep through the night. So there's many, many things you can do to get a solid night's sleep. Now, for those of you who are exhausted and can't sleep, if it's also associated with widespread achiness or uh, with brain fog, we have difficulty with word finding and word substitution. You want to consider that you may have fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. And this is discussed in another tape and also in depth on my website at vitality101.com. Um, but go ahead and at that point, you may want to consider the sleep medications. Among the sleep medications, I think Ambien is the safest and most effective, followed by Trazodone and Neurontin, although the latter two are not considered sleep medications. You're going to see a lot of sniping back and forth uh, between uh, different drug companies. So they'll talk about sleepwalking and sleep eating. All of the sleep medications pretty much do that. Uh, Rosarum, which is now being pushed to as a 
is a medication to physicians, is no more effective than melatonin. It's a synthetic melatonin. There's not a single study showing it to be any more effective than melatonin, but it costs $3.50 a pill instead of $0.10 cents a pill and has unknown side effects. Uh, I consider Rosarum a case where medical economics wins out over medical sanity. Uh, Lunesta, helpful in some folks, but been a disappointment in terms of its effectiveness. I'd like to take a moment and talk about restless leg syndrome. You're going to hear a lot about that because your Equip company wants you to buy their medication. You don't need Requip for restless leg syndrome. You need to treat the iron deficiency. For many of you, and again, the normal range for iron is irrelevant. You want the blood ferritin level to be over 60 if you have restless leg syndrome. And you want to get overall nutritional support with magnesium and other nutrients as well. <clears throat> These things can make a big difference, and treating the iron deficiency will usually make the restless leg syndrome go away. If it doesn't, and you're going to use the medication, I consider Neurontin to be safer and much more effective than the Requip. In addition, if you snore at night and stop breathing, and you may need to videotape yourself to see if this is the case, especially if you have high blood pressure associated with insomnia, think of sleep apnea. Uh, sleep apnea and restless leg syndrome are also discussed at length in my books and on my websites. So I want you all to get a good night's sleep because if you sleep, the research shows your immune system works better. You don't need an avian flu vaccine, which I consider a scam to make people in government a lot of money. You need to get your immune system working with nutrition and solid sleep, which is critical for immune function. If you don't sleep properly, research shows you're 30% more likely to be obese. So you're also going to age quicker. So if you want to get skinny and look younger, you can sleep your way to that. Get your seven to eight hours of sleep a night. Also, to make pain go away and fatigue go away, sleep is critical. So this is Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum wishing you eight hours of deep sleep.